We come 10 years later, 10th anniversary of the war in Iraq. Thomas Young, Iraq War veteran, wounded April 4th, 2004, his fifth day in Iraq, shot in Sadr City, is now writing a letter on this 10th anniversary called The Last Letter, a message to George W. Bush and Dick Cheney from a dying veteran. Thomas, can you read some of your letter to the former president and vice president? Uh, absolutely. It, uh, I write this letter on the 10th anniversary of the Iraq War on behalf of my fellow Iraq veterans. I write this letter on behalf of the 4488 soldiers and Marines who died in Iraq. I write this letter on behalf of hundreds of thousands of veterans who have been wounded and on behalf of those who bear those wounds. I am one of those I am one of the gravely injured. I am paralyzed from in an insurgent ambush in 2004 in Saudi City. My life is coming to an end. I am living under hospice care. I write this letter on behalf of husbands and wives who have lost spouses, on behalf of children who have lost parents, on behalf of the fathers and mothers We've lost sons and daughters, and on the behalf of those of those who care for the many thousands of my fellow veterans who have brain injuries, I write this letter on behalf of veterans, those veterans whose trauma and suffering for what they have done, witnessed, endured in Iraq have led to suicide and on behalf of the uh, active duty soldiers and Marines who commit on average a suicide a day. I write this letter on behalf of some of the one million Iraqi dead and on behalf of the countless Iraqi wounded. I write this letter on behalf of us all the human detritus your words are behind, those who will spend their lives in unending pain and grief. Your position of authority, your millions of dollars of public personal wealth, your public relations consultants, and your privilege and power cannot mask the Hollowness of your character. You said to us, you said to fight and die in Iraq. After you, Miss Jamie, dodged the draft in Vietnam, and you, Mr. Bush, went AWOL from the your National Guard unit. Your cowardice and selfishness were established decades ago. You were not willing to risk yourselves for our nation, but you sent hundreds of thousands of young men and women to be sacrificed in, in a senseless war with no more thought than takes to put out the garbage. I write this letter, my last letter, to you, Mr. Bush and Mr. Cheney. I write not because I think you grasp the, the terrible human and moral consequence of your lies, manipulation, and thirst for wealth and power. I write this letter because before my own death, I want to make it clear that I and hundreds of thousands of my fellow veterans along with millions of my fellow citizens, along with the hundreds of millions of more in Iraq and the Middle East, know fully who you are and what you are. You 
who are in you and who you are and what you have done. You have you may have a justice, but in our eyes you were each guilty of egregious war crimes, of plundering, finally of murder. There's a lot of types very small in my eyes that are going. Um Iraq and Lilies, you know fully who you are and what you've done. You may have faced your justice, but in our eyes you are each guilty of egregious war crimes, of plunder, and finally of murder, including the murder of thousands of young Americans, my fellow veterans, whose future you stole. I draw only on with two days, two days after 9-11, after the 9-11 attacks. I draw only on because our country had been attacked. I wanted to strike back at those who killed some 3,000 plus of my fellow citizens. I did not join the army to go to Iraq, a country that had no part in the 9-11 attacks and did not pose a threat to its neighbors, much less the U.S. I did not join the army to liberate Iraqis or to shut down mythical weapons of mass destruction facilities or to implant what you cynically called democracy in Baghdad and the Middle East. I did not join the army to rebuild Iraq, which at the time you told us could be paid for by, by Iraq for oil revenues. Thomas, we, Thomas we're going to ask you to finish the letter um, after the broadcast, and we're going to post it at democracynow.org. But in these last few seconds of the show, is there anything that would convince you not to end your life in the next few months? Uh, not at this moment. There may come a time in the future when I, um, when I say, hey, things are getting better. Maybe I should reconsider this. But at this moment, nothing in this world has made me change my mind as to what I'm going to do. I want people to go to democracynow.org to see the second part of this conversation that we will continue with Thomas Young and his wife, Claudia Cuellar, from their home in Kansas City, and with legendary talk show host Phil Donahue. Last seconds, Phil. Well, it's just a study in um, what the Americans have not seen. Uh, if you're going to send young men and women to war, show the pain. Otherwise, it's going to be easy for us to have another one. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Thanks for joining. Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.